so um, yes, I'm afraid I'm not very good at this sort of thing. The slotting in me. Yes, uh, I was rather expecting to find a certain kind of anonymity. Don't worry, people don't usually care what happens two floors above or below them. Good. Charlotte's different. She's on all sorts of committees. She said your tenancy application was very Byronic. Is she really? <laughs> Welcome to Kermit Uncut. As you probably know, the London Film Festival is in full swing. I've just come from the premiere of High Rise, the new film by Ben Wheatley starring Tom Hiddleston, adaptation of a J.G. Ballard novel, which people have been trying to adapt for the screen for years and years. It's been a very strange event because the film itself is very dark, very comic, but you know, also very dystopian. And of course, when Tom Hiddleston turned up, he's basically like a pop star. The crowd went mad. People were screaming, people were shouting. He was a real sort of superstar entrance. The interesting thing about High Rise for me is this. I'll do the full review when the film opens next year, but these are my initial thoughts. It seems to have divided people, and I like that very much about it. It seems to be like a one-star or a five-star movie. There are very few people who are in the middle. The whole story plays out within a tower block, which becomes a microcosm of modern society. And bearing in mind the story was actually set originally in the 1970s, it's extraordinary how much that still mirrors. 21st century society. At the bottom of the tower block you have the poorer families, at the top you have the super rich, the super wealthy. Somewhere in the middle you have Tom Hiddleston's character who is there as the building starts to collapse into anarchy. It is a story about a society falling apart, or more specifically, it's a story about a society tearing itself apart from within. Now, over the years, various people have tried to make this film. We've had names like Nick Rogue attached to it, and Vincenzo Natale, I think for a while, Richard Stanley was attached to it. Of course, for me, the name which seemed most prevalent was that of David Cronenberg. Cronenberg, of course, famously adapted J.G. Ballard's Crash. And the film has a central performance by Jeremy Irons, who again sort of strengthens that Cronenberg connection. But there's another connection there as well. There were moments watching the film which I thought did a really terrific job of balancing the humour and the horror, the farce and the fear. But there are moments in there which referred to John Borman's Zardoz. Now, as you probably know, I've always thought that Zardoz was one of the worst films ever made. Ben Wheatley, it turns out, is a huge fan of it. When the recent Blu-ray came out, he could be heard extolling its virtues. And amongst the many triumphs of High Rise, a film which I'm going to go back and watch again before I do my full review, but amongst the many things that are interesting about it, it's one of the few films I've seen recently that manages to reference Zardoz and make me think, actually, maybe Zardoz is quite good. Because if it looks that good in High Rise, maybe it looks that good in the film itself. So, the biggest thumbs up from me, quite apart from the fact that I think that Wheatley has done a terrific job of adapting that novel and bringing it to screen with all that strange darkness and humour and horror, is he's made me rethink Zardoz. Now that is something I don't say every day. Who came here in the stone head? I don't know. It is the only path and passage into the vortex. You will show me how you come to be here. <laughs> 